The Casio Previa line is one of the best sellers worldwide. Today we are looking at the PXS 1100, replacing its predecessor, the 1000. We're going to be talking about the features, we're going to be playing it, talking about what we like about it, and why this might be the right digital piano for you. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Maury. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Ted, we've got, I call it Slim Jim back here. It is pretty s sleek looking. So Casio claims that this is the slimmest, thinnest, thinnest. So like, you know, for an 88 weighted key action that has speakers, this is the slimmest out of the box, ready to go digital portable keyboard. Um, so, I, and I, I think it's accurate because a lot of, you know, a lot of publications have also stated like this is, you know, it's very sleek. It's, it's, uh, it's gonna fit in tight spaces. It's not gonna take up too much room, um, especially if you're in an apartment, if you're in, uh, if you're trying to put this in a hallway or if, you know, you're taking it to gigs and stuff, a lot of times having something that's very compact and slim, but not sacrificing functionality like the weighted keys and full 88 of them um, is a very big perk. And so I wanted to open up with that because I, I think it, it's visually stunning as far as- It is as, cool looking keyboard. As far as digital keyboards go and, and a portable digital keyboard, a lot of times they're very clunky. There's a lot of but buttons. Sometimes there's big speaker display up front for you. Um, but the Privia line from Casio has been around for a couple years. This is the entry into the Privia previ line, the PXS 1100. Um, and it's replacing the PXS 1000, which was a bestseller worldwide. It was always on you know, our top list. Very popular keyboards. Yeah, when you're looking at uh, portable uh, 88 weighted keys under $1,000 and even under $700. Lightweight too. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, it's pretty kick-ass. And so um, a really good product from Casio. There's, you know, just a couple minor improvements from the predecessor, the 1000. Um, one of them being speaker um, speaker layout. So, so the, the way that they, uh, you know, set up the speakers projecting back towards, you know, like an upright back towards the wall that it's pressed up against. Um, they apparently, they, they just, you know, worked on how the, the internally it was set up and, you know, sounds better now ready to go. Um, and so that's something that, you know, really needs to be consumed like in front of the instrument. So that's going to be hard for us to demo today. So we're just actually going to be pulling sounds off of this um, with some cables. But uh, when you're sitting in front of it, it does have a little bit more of a full sound than the predecessor, the PXS1000. Um, the 1100 also comes with a really cool um, connectivity thing. It comes with a little a Bluetooth adapter. Um, I think it's like the WB10, which is, right. it, it's a Casio product, um, but really it just plugs into the back here into the USB slot um, and you plug it in and it has the capability to be Bluetooth audio and Bluetooth MIDI just right out of the box, which in this price range, you don't really see that a lot. Um, so just a really a neat thing that they added onto this, um, kind of makes it a little bit more user-friendly right out of the back. Right. And so, uh, so Ted, what do you, we've played it a couple times, um, and give me your initial impressions of how it feels, how it sounds, 18 tones in it, I believe. Yeah, um, yeah the first thing I notice is that changing the tones, um, is you have to hold down this button and you use these keys. The, and it, it's the yeah, grand piano button, right? It's the grand piano button. You hold that down and then you can use these keys up to about here, I think. And so all these are different sounds. And then when you go up, it affects different things. And then mm -hmm. there's the same way you can use the function button and you can alter uh, the tuning, the temperament, uh, the, the type of tuning, whether it's Kernberger or something like that. You can split it. And nice. you can split it and you can do a lot of different things with the function. I do like that they left the idea of changing the sounds fairly simple so you don't need that big map mm -hmm. that shows you what every key does. Yeah, once you kind of figure out the first time, it's, it's very simple. And, and in all fairness, a lot of the lower line keyboards, even the ones from your major manufacturers like Yamaha and uh, I, I know Roland and I think that Kawhi, they use the keys as an actual 
uh, function button or some way to add or subtract to the volume or to the pitch or something. Yeah. Like so that. when we play it here in a sec, you should you should be able to see it. But really, uh, what what Ted's talking about is you hold down the function button and then you're you're selecting from the keys and those trigger off as buttons and change the voice or change the tuning. You've got to have the right octave and the right key. Too. What, That's well, the other thing. What's smart on this one is the the function button is separate from the voice but button. And That's it, the part that I liked. Yeah. So so you're not accidentally you know trying to switch to electric piano and you know change changing the tune or changing or transposing right. it or so on some on older models it's just a one function button and a power button um, and that can be a little confusing because you know depending on where your strike on the on the uh, the keyboard another thing i like that they they actually balanced all of the sounds a lot of times on these lower line keyboards you'll get the one piano sound and then when you go to the second or third one the volume is off or it's real loud or it's soft and then you get to the harpsichord and it's extremely loud these are all balanced so the sounds are balanced if you change from one to the other there's not any major change now on the downside i wasn't crazy about the way it played mm -hmm. i know it has a uh, some kind of weighted hammers in it but i think it's still a little too light mm -hmm. i had uh a bit of a struggle playing it initially only because it was too light and I don't want to say it was wobbly the keyboard wasn't moving but it felt like the keys weren't rock solid and again that the touch is so tightly connected to the sound that if you don't like the sound and you don't like the touch you're not going to really be that crazy about the piano yes yeah, so and I had a few moments like that with this thing I, uh, I think that the sounds could be a little bit better. I don't know if it's because we didn't have it up against the wall mm -hmm. or we have it with these curtains in the back, but overall, I thought it was just a little muddy sound. But again, the speakers were not pointing at me. Yeah. So it almost sounded like you were behind the monitors, which essentially you are because they're, they're facing away from you. And it's not a super loud volume. It's not like it's 1,000 watts or something. I think it's 8 watts per side. Yeah. So you get 16 watts total power um, coming out of it. That's going to be how, you know, how developed the sound If you sound. play one of these, and you're just a shopper where you're looking for a keyboard, this one is gonna click off, all the boxes are gonna be checked, and then if you sit down and you play it, you're gonna feel like, hey man, this is a pretty good keyboard. Now, if you've been around for a while and you've played a lot of keyboards, this, this one might be something that you think is, well, it's just it's a little bit beneath what I want. Mm -hmm. I want something that's uh, gonna be, have more clarity or a little bit harder action or something, maybe more buttons easier to use, not yeah. have to think around, but, when you consider what this thing has given you, it's given you 88 weighted action keys that you can practice on, memorize scales, do all that kind of stuff, learn literature. Uh, it has headphones and it also has an input. So I think you can run other sounds through it to learn songs with and jam on it as well. Um, it's nice that it has left and right out too. I think that was a does. change from the predecessor. So you actually can run it out stereo, um, which can, you know, we're, we're gonna run it out stereo in this video. Um, so that's basically taking your left and right channel um, and running it out and as you know as a full sound so that you can have a stereo sample of an acoustic instrument I think on the Casio they use what they call a German piano um, and so you that's know, what they call it German piano I guess it's supposed to be a German piano yeah and so, and so it's one of those German brands maybe Steinway maybe uh, Beckstein Beckstein you know Luthner. it's one of those German pianos they, they don't want to you know give it away specific yeah um, it's it's like the what how many spices recipe yeah right uh, yeah 16 15 14 KFC secret recipe yeah, who knows right. But the Privia does have a whole bunch of functionality in it, um, and just lightweight. It's it's a uh, 18 tones. We'll play through them here um, and take a listen to it right now. Um, but yeah, so one you know a tick against it, I would say, is the action isn't too too you know the highest standard. Right. Um, but at this price point, at 650. It definitely is adequate to get a beginner going. Well, I can see where this is a magnet for beginners. And, and, and it is, if you do demo the thing and you keep in consideration that this is one of the most popular selling keyboards in the world, it's pretty easy to understand why. Mm -hmm. It is the smallest of all 88 key uh, yeah. digitals you can get. It's in a compact thing. I would imagine some people may even want to take these and put them in those shell pianos because it looks like it's going to fit with no problem. Oh yeah, no, you're not going to run into any issues yeah. with that. So let's take a listen. Ted's going to play it for us. We're going to hear the 18 sounds um, and we'll kind of go through how it changes sounds as well. So we'll take a listen.
Ted, that was really cool. I, I really enjoy how it gives you a sample of what voice you're going to be selecting. Middle C. It, it, it sounds on middle C. Yeah. Even though you're hitting down here, you get when you're holding this, you get the middle C of whatever sound is coming up. That's one of my pet peeves with instruments that are designed like this. When you hit the function button and you click one of what's supposed to be a voice, it just goes beep, beep. It, just, it usually beeps or clicks and lets you know that it's registering, but it doesn't let you know what it's registering. And so right. then you test and you're like, oh, that was organ. I wanted harpsichord. I wanted electric pianos. I wanted strings. And you're always like guessing where it is. Right. On this one, you actually hear what voice you're going to be playing. So it kind of gives you a, a quick sample. Just a short sample. A sample of what's going to be played. So I, I really enjoy that. Uh, again, when you're playing it, what did you think of piano voices versus other voices? I think the piano voices were the stronger uh, of all the voices mm -hmm. that were in there. I, I kind of favored the slow strings mm -hmm. because they had a really good sounding middle section and uh, that has an electric piano that's supposed to be a Rhodes, which I really liked. Now, I did not get into the parameters. For example, they have a Wurlitzer sound in there that is really a pretty good sound, but it had too fast of a vibrato and it's too wide of a vibrato. You can go in and change those. I did not do that because that involves the function button and finding the key that oh, okay. does it. Okay. But very so, cool. But other than that, I I think it's a it's a great keyboard, but you have to bear in mind that it is not a top of the line professional quality or intermediate type type. And, and piano. so yeah, so the things that you are gaining is portability, of course, very easy to move around, lightweight, um, slim, but you had to sacrifice a little bit. And so if you're a beginner, this will get you ready to go for a couple years. Um, if you're more of an advanced player, we'd say maybe look at some different options in this price range because um, if you spend a little bit more, you can sometimes get a, a lot more. Um, if you're looking specifically for electric pianos or for a great action or a good piano sound, kind of depends on what your focus is. And we do a lot of videos on kind of this price range, anything from about $500 to about $1,500. We like to you know, find what would be the it's best popular thing to, price range. Yeah, what's yeah. the best thing to take to a gig if you are a musician, if you are playing, um, and if you are looking for a specific instrument. A huge bonus too, battery powered. Um, so that is also something that goes along with portability. Um, 192 note polyphony, again, a leader in this kind of class, this price point. Um, if you're spending under $700, you don't usually expect seeing 256 note polyphony. Right. Um, I, don't, I don't think anyone on the market does. I think Roland does, and it's at the next price point, which is about $100 more. Um, so Casio's Privia PXS 1100, it's going to be selling, you know, those thousands and thousands of these will be selling around the world. We give it a, a pretty good thumbs up. Um, definitely not a flawless instrument, but I think it's it will be great for beginners, for you know hobbyists that are looking for something portable that they can take on the road. Um, lots of uses for this, and uh, really a good product from Casio. Thank you guys for watching. This is Ted Barcelo. I'm Patrick Marr. We'll see you next time.